What is it? <coughs> Who's calling? Mm? Who's calling? What are you wanting? <coughs> you walked away a minute ago, didn't you? Huh? She's a pain. We've just been down to put the chickens away and she always, she charges up to get here ahead of us, rushes up to the door and she does sometimes poke her head through. Don't you? And I often say to you, do you want to come in? Hmm? But it's a bit scary, isn't it? You just don't know what's in here. Huh? Are you going to go away? Or are you going to call at the door as soon as I close it again? Hmm? She's just around the corner there. You can't see her. Playing hard to get, aren't you? Huh? See, look, she backs off. I do wonder whether in, when winter comes and, the, <laughs> and she can feel the heat that she'll come in. And then we'll have pee and poo all over the floor, won't we? Hmm? How long am I to stand like this? I've got things to do. You're such a difficult girl. I'm closing the door. Closed. So I'm going to do some cooking. I've been reading and reading um, Bob Mortimer's autobiography and he um, talks a lot about pie. <laughs> he has a thing about meat pies and it made me sort of think, well, I could make a pie. I haven't made a pie. I haven't made pastry for ages. And the only re the last pastry, the last pie I made was that pork pie. And I made it with um, rice flour and chestnut flour and it was so sweet. It was horrible. But um, the only way I can have pie really is if I make the pastry myself so that's what I'm going to do using um, sarasan flour which is buckwheat but first of all I want to show you my apron which you may not be able to see I'm going to have to work out how to show you I might have to stand back I bought it because it covers here and it's big and it goes round me like this and oh, it's a bit difficult I can't look I'm looking at this I'm looking at myself and if I look at myself I can't do it I need to do that without looking and it's got these bits on the side and I've really noticed how much I wipe my hands on my side so that's my new apron I'm really pleased with it and now I'm going to work out how I'm going to line you up so I can watch me making pastry. So hold tight. OK, so first of all, I um, have just looked at this. And it says black flour, 100% Blais Noir. I have been believing this to be sans gluten, no gluten. But I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is half this and half this, which is millet flour, which is some gluten, I hope. That's what I bought it for anyway. So half and half, and use the scales. Which I can't see. Yes, I can, I can. So I'm gonna do what I do is, um, God, I've got to remember now, it's so long. Um, I do half fat to flour and I'm going to use 
better to do too much than not enough so I'm going to use two 500 grams of flour don't sieve it I don't sieve it I'm not saying don't sieve it I don't sieve I'm not a, I'm not a sieve so what did I say 500 so I do 200 of that of that I might use 200 of that I might use some rice flour as well just to it's very yellow isn't it? I think I'll use some rice flour won't be too sweet because that was the problem for me I, I thought it was pretty disgusting and I um, divided it up with pork pie and froze it and Mark I'd get a piece out for Mark every so often oh damn scales have gone off so I had about 400 in there so I just need 100 now uh, yeah so Mark ate it he didn't mind. I, I don't like, I don't mind sweet stuff if I'm expecting it to be sweet, but I don't like my savoury stuff to be sweet. That'll do. I'm not, um, I don't do precise. I eyeball stuff and I will be doing that with the water that people find really difficult. Um, so next up, I'm going to be using, what do I want? So I want to, why is that going off? I bet the battery's going, that's a bummer. I want, I'm using lard. I don't know what you call lard in America. Pork fat. I'm going to do, so I've done 500, so I want 250. My battery's going. Okay, before I do any more, I shall get the man indoors, change my battery for me. That's better. Changed it myself. Um, so what am I doing? 250 of fat. So I'm going to do um, 200 or whatever that measures out at. Or whatever that measures out at. That's 130. I'll make it up to 250 with the butter. Me. That'll do. The rest of that can go in some salt. Well, she was supposed to put, put this in all cut up into small pieces and I haven't because that's not the way I roll <laughs> okay gonna use my hands gonna put I need the knife in a minute put that over there yeah butter's really hard the um the lard is softer Been watching Bake Off, an old one, a 2014 one. 
I'd not seen that, so I was quite pleased actually, so I didn't know who'd won. Good on the hands. So we went to Chazneuil Poitou earlier. It's much harder the butter than the lard. Um, and we looked for um, a light fitting for the bedroom ceiling because since we've had the walls painted, it's quite dark in there. And it's a chandelier in the bedroom, a small chandelier and it takes a small candle bulb the problem is the um wattage is quite low so with the bedroom walls now being quite dark um when you put the main light on the overhead light you know if you're wanting to look for something in the bedroom you can't really see that well so we were looking first of all we were looking and have looked for several weeks for um bulbs but you can't for that style you can't get a higher wattage bulb it's really irritating so we decided that we would look for um a new light fitting a new overhead light fitting um and and Leroy Merlin is the a bigger outlet so you've got more choice than um, we have in the more local shops um, so we went into KFC first and it was nice it wasn't I said to Mark you know he said well you know how is it I said well it tastes nice it feels nice in your mouth um, and it's and it's tender and it's sort of juicy but I remember KFC where it used to run down your chin <laughs> he said maybe the answer is Maybe the answer is to spray some grease down your chin next time. And I said, yeah, that's a good plan. So I had that. It was crowded in there because we got there at about half twelve. So, of course, everybody was in there. Um, and then we went to Leroy Merlin and looked at all the chandeliers. The chandeliers, at uh, least ceiling lights, and you're calling them ceiling lights. And there was nothing, nothing at all that um, that appealed to me. I would have bought another chandelier um, had it had a, you know, you could use higher wattage bulbs in it, but they didn't even have any chandeliers in there. Um, so, you know, there's nothing. And I said, no, I don't just want to get one for the sake of it. So we went over to the other side because he wanted a small handheld chainsaw, um, which we found. And then we came home and on the way home, I said to him, I could look. I'll look at Ikea when we get home. And lo and behold, the first one I came to on Ikea um, was ideal. And it matches the bedroom furniture. Our bed's black wood. And this is black and, and little white globes. Eight white globes sort of staggered around each other. I can't explain it really, but it it'll be... It'll look nice and it should give us a bit more spread of overhead light when you need it. And um can have it delivered. So because IKEA for us is two hours, a two hour trip. So we last time we went to IKEA was a long time ago, but we've started to get exhausted by going there, you know, the two hours each way and then the whole what, three hour, I suppose, three hour trapes round. It's just too much for us now. So it'll be delivered next week. So I'm pleased about that. So what I'm aiming for are fine breadcrumbs like this. And it would have come quicker had the fat not being so hard, but at the same time, it's better to be cold than too warm. And the way to make sure you've got them all is if you shake it, the lumps come to the top. 
Now the problem's going to come when I add the water because what I do again is I do it by eye and I do it under a running tap. Um, and I feel that if I do that whilst I'm filming, I'll take my eye off the ball and I'll end up with it too wet. So I am going to fill a jug with water and but I have no idea how many mils of water you need. It really is. Um, I just, you know, I learned to make pastry watching my mum and, and she used to do it under a tap of, of running water. You know, very small trickle of water, but that's how she did it. And it's just, I just do it. I just can't explain it, but I will try and explain it. I think what I'm going to do is make the pastry and then wrap it up and rest it overnight in the fridge because I'm actually feeling quite tired now. I don't think I can complete the whole process um, this evening. So I'll do this and then rest it and then I'll carry on filming tomorrow when I make the rest which will be mince and onion and depending on how the mushrooms are looking i've got mushrooms in the fridge that need using and of course our diet over the weekend has been restricted so it's like um i couldn't use them because uh, mark couldn't have them so i'm hopeful sorry hopeful that they'll um there'll be some there that i can use and put those in as well and all the other things i chuck in do I chuck in Worcester sauce, marmite, tomatoes? I think I'll do a um, tomato pulp that makes a nice rich gravy. Anchovies, I'm gonna put anchovies in. That really does. If you want to make something sing, if you want to add flavor, I've only recently caught on because um, I watched. Recipe 30, which is Chef Joel, and um, he puts anchovies in his sauces, and it really does make the sauce sing. Right, I think that's pretty well ready to add water to. Cold water. Oh, I'm going to do ice, ice cold water. All the measurements on the jug have disappeared as well, so I can't even tell you what I've put in the jug. I'm trying to read it. That might be about 250 in the jug, so let's have, see how this does. risk that that might be too much. No, it doesn't look it, but it suddenly starts to come together and then you end up with a very wet mixture. I'm certainly not going to add any more water for a bit until I'm... I think that's going to be it. I'm going to mix it by hand now to finish it off. And then I can feel how it is. Yeah, I think that's good. It should come away from the side of the bowl. And it's doing that. It's quite crumbly still. Which is good because it will make a nice sort of short crumbly pastry. So that was approximately 250 mils.
and it is sticking to my fingers. So there are some dry bits, but there are also some sticky bits. So it is plenty of, see there's a, this is dry here, but that will go in. Okay, so I think that will do. I'm not going to roll it out. I'm just going to shape it a little. Yeah, that's come together well. tell me I'm doing it all wrong. I'm not a cook. I'm not trained. This is how I do it. And it's a bit hit and miss. Now I've got to get the cling film open, unwrapped, yes. do is I'm going to pop it into a smaller bowl now. And there'll be more room in the fridge for it. There, that's it for now. See you in a bit. What have you got there? 22 minutes of me making pastry and a bit of Ida. Yeah, see you in the morning. And thankfully, it's still not morning by the way, thankfully the mushrooms are highly suitable. And I made this the other day. It's um, tomatoes that were... Um, really very ripe so I thought I'm going to make them into a sauce so I can mash that down tomorrow it's got garlic in it all those bits in it are garlic that can be the tomato sauce that goes in with the mushrooms and the onions into the meat right a demain morning I had some thoughts about I had a horrible night and during that horrible night, I was going over what I was going to do this morning, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I made some decisions that I'm not going to put, um, I'm not going to use the tomato, I'm not going to use the mushrooms. I'll make that into a pasta tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to use, I'm not going to use Marmite. I'm not going to use Worcester sauce. I'm going to, I, I remembered I got these. Are you going to use a stock cube, a beef stock cube and a bit of Bisto just to thicken up? The gravy slightly because I want to be able to I want it to be taste of mince meat minced beef pie and not all the other ingredients um, and my memory of minced beef pies are oh, they're very mincy doesn't make sense does it so my first thing to do is to sort this onion out and I'm gonna slice it not chop it because um, as I recall, you, you get to you see the onion. It, it sort of hasn't disappeared in the pie. 
and I'm going to fry them up, the slices, until they're translucent. Then I'm going to lift them out of the um, pan and then um, do them in quarters. I think. I'm going to lift them out of the pan and then quickly brown the mince, which I think in America is ground beef. I don't know whether it looks the same. Um, sort of imagine ground meat is smaller and small and crummy, if that makes sense. Right, I'm going to pause you whilst I fiddle around over behind me. I'm not going to keep changing positions. But one of the things that was going through my head last night was, what am I going to put the pies in? Now, I don't have a pie dish. I don't have a proper, because I don't make pies, I don't have a pie dish. And then I remember I've got four of these. I don't know how many. I'm hoping that the pastry will do these four. But as a backup, I've got this, which makes like a pasty, or whatever you want to call it. So that will be my backup. Um, these should these should be enough. I'm trying to work out whether to put grease with paper in them or just butter them. So the onions are cooking, and I'm using the wok because it distributes the heat well, better than my frying pan. And then once they're done, I'll, um, I'll move them out and then I'll quickly brown the beef. This is the beef. So it's not, it's run through a mincer, so I don't know how it compares to what you have um, in America. to do, which I've remembered, thanks to Bake Off, is that your pie filling needs to cool before you add it to your pie. So that's why I'm doing this now. I say now, what time is it? 20 past nine. So I'm going to cook off the mince and the onion and get it ready. And then the pastry the dough is out of the fridge, so that can come back up to room temperature a bit. Oh, sorry. And then um, I'll roll out the pies once the filling has cooled, um, so that, that you sort of avoid soggy bottom, I think. So I don't need these yet. I can go there, I can go there. Okay, go there. I'll just need that once my onions are translucent. So I'm going to stop there and then um, show you once the um, mince is cooked and the onions are cooked mixed together and mixed in with the bisto and the... once my filling is ready I'll show it you there it smells exactly how I remember a minced beef pie smells I'm pleased I decided not to put marmite in that just sort of overpowers it really um, and I remembered I was going to put a little bit of white pepper in, which I've done. Um, and it surprises me that um, 
we don't use white pepper much now. It always used to be the pepper we had, didn't it? And now it's all ground black pepper. But white pepper is very different and very pungent, powerful, piquant, um, strong. So I put a little bit of that in. So, and there's Bisto in there just to thicken it slightly. And I'm, what I'll do is when I fill the pies, I won't put the gravy in the pie apart from, I'll use my slotted spoon. So there'll be bits of gravy left, but um, I won't put the gravy in. The gravy will be on the plate so the pie doesn't get wet. So I'm going to leave that now and let that cool. And then I'll come back to it in about, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. And make up the pies and put in cooler filling so I don't get soggy bottoms. So I decided I'm going to butter these. The mince is nearly cool. I think that I will certainly have enough mince to do the um, that pasty mould, but I'm not sure about the pastry. Probably have enough pastry. It's sort of misty out there this morning, quite autumnal. Mark's out there using his hedge cutter on the, um, the low growing uh, low growing evergreen shrub that the chickens congregate under. We decided to cut it back a bit as I thought they were laying eggs under there and you can't see. Got a cat wandering around in the kitchen. She sat looking and waiting for a mouse yesterday. And I knew where it was, tiny thing. So I gave her access to it. She caught it. Yeah, you. Are you going to wind around the tripod or are you going to go out? Go out and see your dad. Look, he's out here. Come on. Go on. She caught it. And as she went out the front door with it, through the chains, she lost it in the chains. It didn't, it didn't come in. I, could, I saw it drop to the ground. And um, she spent quite a lot of time looking for it. So I'm leaving that much for top, for the top, so I might leave a bit more than that. Because it's been out of the fridge for about three quarters of an hour, it's still pretty chilled. Oh, and we need flour. cut this into four that's massive gonna make much more that is gonna fill that let's see even that's thick To that shouldn't really stick to that. Now I've broken it. Now it's breaking apart. 
that is, um, I don't know, what did I use? I used the um, Saracen flower, but the other flower I used may be an issue. Um, I think I'm probably going to work this by hand. still feels thick. thicker than I would like but it seems that when I get to um, any thinner and, and it begins to break and people that know about dough will know why that is I don't know about dough so I don't know why that is to do I'm gonna to have to come up with another plan for uh, my mum used to have a, a a pie dish which was I had it you know wasn't was a bit it was about that deep but was a plate like a plate an enamel plate and it was ideal these these are fine if I had a big um, dish like that I'd use that Okay, let's see how that is with the filling in it. Don't go away. I'm just wetting this. Uh, it'll dry before I can get the top on. I reckon that might be enough for the top. Yes, this is an interesting dough. to let the steam out. Right, let's try one more. It 
So I finished reading Bob Mortimer. I skipped through quite a bit of it because um, I didn't used to watch him on when he was working with Vic Reeves. He, it wasn't something that I watched. Oh, hold on. Got a bit of a water pipe issue and every so often it sounds like somebody's trying to get in with a pneumatic drill. Um, yeah, I didn't used to watch Vic Reeves' Big Night Out or whatever it was called. Um, so there was a lot of um, discussion about that. A lot. But I, was, I was more interested in his life around that. Um, had a very close relationship with his mother. Very sweet relationship with his mother. Really cared for her, which was really nice. That's too thick. But I'm going for it. Um, and I sort of came across him more in um, Gone Fishing with Paul Whitehouse. Really enjoy that programme. It's really restful, really, um, yeah, really, really nice. And I was more interested in that. And then I've also been watching Would I Lie to You? And he's on that quite a bit as a guest. Um, uh, I don't, yeah, so I was more interested in those bits. This is so thick, this pastry, but I am able to reduce it once it's in there. Um, so yeah, I finished that and I'm now reading um, Aid Edmondson's, auto I've just started it, Aid Edmondson's autobiography. Hmm. Watching um, Bake Off, they did do a Pi Week in one of the Bake Offs I watched um, recently, and um, I'm quite interested in um, the comments that they get that they didn't put enough filling in, which is why they end up with gaps. Um, when the pie is cooked, so I'm trying to make sure I fill it enough. So I read a, an article in The Guardian yesterday by Robert Reich um, about Elon Musk and it is so worrying, so worrying. He's interfering massively um, and has been interfering and I think he probably have uh, interfered I think he interfered in the UK elections but he is interfering in the the the, um, the US stuff and and will interfere more um, and it's quite frightening he's got so much he's you know he's so rich he's got so much power I didn't wet that. He's got so much power that he's difficult to stop. And the only way to stop him, well it wouldn't, the only way to curb him slightly would be to boycott his products. And I feel really pissed off that I've got Starlink. Um, sort of feel like I've sold my soul to the devil. And, and probably was another choice but I just wanted to remove myself from being held to ransom by France Telecom you know without interview interview without internet for that is very full isn't it without internet for 20 days um, so yeah I feel a bit pissed off really that I succumbed hope that enough can be done to counteract any anything that that he does. God, 
this pastry is not this dough is um, very fragile so I'm going to see if I can find something that I can make one big pie because I might make this this one just for fun but then the rest of it I'm going to make into a big pie just to not have to keep working small bits of pastry I don't like working pastry too much either because it just makes it tough so I'm a bit wary of that as well with the hospital sending me home like that without me being able to go and see and tell Mark um, it is it's I've said it before it's very typical of France the uh, the nursing here is very different um, in England the nursing is patient-led and in France it's task orientated so it's just you know we've got this to do we're going to do it we do it every day we know what we're doing she doesn't need to be here with no thought to um the support we might give each other um god god this is delicate uh yeah so i'm a, sort of a bit peed off about that being sent home and him not knowing and thinking i'd gone off I think well, he's commented on my blog saying he thought I'd gone off because I wasn't feeling well. I mean, I wasn't feeling well, but I wouldn't have. That wouldn't have stopped me from. It's a bit thin under there. I think I might just put. A bit of extra support there because I don't want it to split. Yeah, so that's, I'm not happy about that. I'm going to wet that. Well, I was right about that. Even with what I've just put in, that's dripping through onto my hand. Bloody hell. God. That's nah, not going to work. No, nah, that's not working now ruined all of that pastry um, I've dropped it into the pan with the mints and um, that was just running all over my hand it's interesting was it linseed paste was it lin linseed I used oh damn I've got bloody pastry in my mints now Okay, I'm gonna 
see what I've got that I can use all in one go. I think. This is a microwave dish, so it would heat up, you heat it up in the microwave. I haven't used it for years, but actually it's shallow enough. Um, and the fact that it heats up on the bottom is a good thing, because it means that the pastry will cook on the bottom, hopefully. I'm running out of options now. So some of that mince has now got pastry in it, dough in it, which is a pain in the bum, but it's just going to, that's the way it is. We're going to have to roll with it. Okay. So. Probably now not enough dough. to split now. And as soon as you get it thin, it begins to get to break up. roll this around the rolling pin but I think if I roll it around the rolling pin we're gonna give it a go don't want those now if I roll it around the rolling pin I think it's gonna break see Gonna be a bit of a patchwork, but Mary Berry's not here, so that's not really gonna be an issue. And as long as it holds the meat, it's a bit thick in the middle there and there, but that's coming off. making chopping sounds like I'm making chopping noises that's what that's about no okay So there are bits, bits of dough in the pie filling. Just pretend you can't see them. It's still got that much left. It might be too much for the top. I think 
we're just going to work with that. Of course, the top is meant to be thin, but um, rolling it thin is not going so well. really want to be patchworking the top. <sighs> Nearly. I'm hopeful that the gravy, the wet mince, has made this damp enough to stick the two pieces together. It's not going to be pretty. Gonna be a bit thick. It's gonna leak. Mm. I think I'm gonna look out for a proper pie dish because this is bloody ridiculous. So something, something like this, but full size.
still not as dark as they should be, the yolks, but they, they're getting there. They're much darker than they were when we first got the ends. I might have to use a different brush because that's got butter on it. Oh. Bit of salt in that. Careful how I spread this on. God, it's such a mess. Can't give this beaten egg to her because it's got salt in it. Otherwise, I would have done. Meow. So I've got the oven heated to 180. I'm going to leave the individual pies for, I'm going to look at them after 20 minutes. Um, and the bigger one I will expect to take probably 40 minutes, a bit less, but I'll just keep an eye on them. Oof. Okay, somebody come and clean up for me now. Yeah, okay, we'll come back to it when they're done. So there we are. Um, not pretty. Um, this had 40 minutes. These had half an hour. Um, and hopefully they'll be cooked underneath. And um, I think I'll use the individual ones for dinner. I'm not doing what I was going to do with it. I'm absolutely knackered. Um, because I didn't have a good night. So um, I'm doing, I've got baked potatoes in the microwave and I will open a tin of peas and um, there's a bit of gravy left in the wok, which will be ample. So that's it. Thank Hock for that. I wish I hadn't started. I did it and um, I'm looking for, I can't clear up I've not cleared up in here I don't know I mean I will get a second wind later and be able to clear up but at the moment I am just sitting drinking coffee waiting for the taters to cook what time is it it's 20 20 to 12 Mark's still got work to do in the garden he's knackered so he has to keep stopping so he's not quite uh, on form after the weekend and Monday's colonoscopy. So um, I think we're probably going to have a restful afternoon. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time. Oh, and remember, I'm not a cook. It's now 10 to 3 and I still haven't cleared up. Um, it tasted, not, it, well it was nice, Mark said it tasted, not, I couldn't really taste it. I could smell it when I was cooking it, but I couldn't taste it.
but um and it was very filling just one baked potato an individual pie and some bees just really filling uh, i enjoyed it and the picture of the pie um shows the bottom so there wasn't a soggy bottom that was nicely cooked on the bottom i don't know what i'm going to do with the big pie it's going to have to wait now i don't think we'll be eating that for a while because it was filling um and i won't be using it, it was millet flour that i'd used and it it says i've looked since because that's what i do i look afterwards so um you should use a third to two thirds so it should have been a third millet flour and um, two thirds of whatever flour you're using. I'm just going to check. Hold on. Well, I needn't have panicked. The Sarasan is. I think I'd looked it up before when I was doing it last night and read Blay on it. I thought, no, actually, yeah, Blay. And when it well, Blay is is, and it showed the 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 ear of wheat. It just made me worry. So it should have been two thirds buckwheat. And a third millet, and it wasn't, there was too much millet, which is why it was just falling apart. Um, but Mark enjoyed it. And that's important to me, that he enjoys the food I make for him. So, anyway. So thanks, Bob, for the pie. I made pie. And um, I'm not sure when I'm going to be doing it again. Bye. <laughs>